This video will explain everything you need to know to track your meta ad results in GA4 so you can holistically understand the performance of all of your digital marketing in one place. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Now I'll show you exactly how to do it and also discuss various attribution models because the how-to part is the easy bit but understanding the data is far more important and far more difficult. The problem businesses have when they're running multiple advertising streams is knowing exactly how to attribute a return on investment to each advertising stream. And they need to do this to understand where to move their budget to maximize their revenues and to know what's working. Now, whilst GA4 will quite easily track performance from SEO, Google Ads, direct traffic and referral traffic, it won't easily track performance from other traffic such as Meta or other non on Google advertising platforms, unless we set things up correctly. Businesses often complain that the data they're given by GA4 and Facebook that they don't match up, and that Facebook is telling them, for example, they've sold a hundred thousand pounds worth of products, and GA4 claims Google Ads have sold another hundred thousand pounds of products. So you would think that they've sold two hundred thousand pounds worth of stock. However, the business will know that they've only sold one hundred and fifty thousand pounds worth, and then they question their data. But the reason for this discrepancy is that both GA4 and and Facebook may be claiming the same sales, so you're getting double reporting. Now, I'll show you exactly how you avoid that. Unfortunately, even when we do set things up correctly, things aren't always straightforward. And unless you watch this video, performance tracking can be really difficult to understand. In this video, we're gonna explain, number one, how to track your meta ads results in GA4. Now, this is probably what you're here for, but if you stick around until the end, I'm gonna go into other matters that are incredibly important for you to understand as an advertiser. Now, this is going to include the different attribution models used by Meta Ads and GA4. An attribution model is simply how a platform gives credit to a sale and tells you that a certain sale was a result of a certain ad. Now, because to really understand return on investment, you need to know how different platforms are attributing sales and why this will always cause differentials in your data. Now, we'll discuss the different attribution settings for Meta Ads because there is more than one to choose from, the different attribution models for Google Ads and what we mean by first touch and last touch attribution. And finally, why GA4 will always underreport Meta's conversion data. So let's get started. Let's jump into the laptop and I'll show you how to create a URL parameter outside of Meta Ads as well. This, you should be well familiar with this. This is just one of our client accounts and we've just set up a dummy campaign here. So you should be familiar with the campaign level, ad set level and ad level. So to set up, to be able to track things in GA4, for the data to be able to pull from Facebook and be interpreted within GA4, you're gonna to need to set up a URL parameter. So to do that, we come into the ad level and this is really, really simple guys. So uh, I will scroll right down. So all of this, this is where you would, you know, enter and create your ads, etc. do your audience targeting, uh, sorry, your audience targeting's in the ad set level. When you get down here to the destination setting, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the destination where you want to send people. So for example, this is to Bedford Lodge Hotel Spa. We're not just gonna leave that there because if we left that there, Google Analytics is gonna struggle to interpret the traffic that is coming from certain ads to um, your website. But if we put a URL parameter around it, that's a little bit of code that we create here in the Facebook ad system that allows GA4 to really quickly see a variety of data depending on what we set it. So the first thing that I always do up here is I just type in meta ads. So the very first thing that I would then see in Google Analytics 4 when I look at the source medium, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute, is meta ads. So I know instantly at a glass glance that the source of that traffic that's being reported is from meta advertising. Not organic, not anything else, but from a Facebook ad. In campaign medium, you can put a variety of things here, but what I would always do is avoid putting the ID because the campaign ID, ad set ID, or ad ID is just a big string of numbers. It's not gonna mean anything to you, but if you have a solid campaign name, ad set name, ad name, so for example, we could have a campaign that is around a certain spa break, so it would read meta ads forward slash spa break, 
Then we can have the ad set name. If it's important to you to know how traffic is differentiating between the campaign level and the ad set level, or even the ad level, but sometimes even placements, so you wanna know how traffic differs when it comes from Instagram or from the Facebook feeds, then you can pop placement in there. When you've decided how you want to strip down your traffic reporting, because you might not be that interested in placements and you just wanna know which campaign traffic is performing to what extent, you quite simply click apply and that puts your campaign source in here. So that is your URL parameter, that is your UTM code, another sort of uh, terminology for it, and that will allow Google Analytics to pull the data and to see how traffic from your Facebook ads is reporting. So let's go into GA4 and I'll show you how it presents in there. Okay, so here's another client account. This is just GA4. So this is uh, this is one of our e-commerce clients. So if I come in here to reports and I come to acquisition and then go down to traffic acquisition. And then what you can see here is it displays various information about, about the traffic performance from organic search, from direct, from cross network, organic social. You can see that paid search does appear in there. Uh, this is a short uh, date range, so we will expand it out to 12 months just to give us even more data. Um, so paid search is appearing in there, but not to a great degree. Uh, and that just relates to Google advertising and not Facebook advertising. So what I'm gonna do is select session primary channel group and I'm gonna go to session source medium. And when it loads, there you can see meta ads forward slash Lilac James advantage shopping campaign, the July campaign. Then you can see the, the beginner telescopes, the Boxing Day campaign. And if I go to other pages, you will quickly, at a glance, be able to see our Black Friday campaign, more traffic from the Boxing Day campaign, and this is where that you're going to see it. And you can then analyze the difference in engagement times between different campaigns. In this example, it's pretty much um, pretty much the same. You can see that it's slightly lower than other forms of traffic. That's quite normal for Facebook ads, so I wouldn't worry about those sorts of things. If you do want to really understand how to analyze your Facebook ads performance, we do have a video around it that I will link above in a little card for you. Um, but that is how you see where your Facebook ads traffic performs in GA4. So don't go anywhere, because if you really want to excel with digital advertising and truly understand all your data, you simply have to understand the attribution models and the bias that platforms like GA4 will have when it comes to data modeling. So first, we'll explain how Facebook attributes a conversion event, because it does it differently to how Google does it, which is why the data will not always add up. So Facebook has an attribution model, which is on a seven day click or one day view. So this means if somebody clicks on one of your Facebook ads and then six or seven days later they make a conversion that you're measuring it will attribute the sale and one day view simply means if they've seen the Facebook ad but they haven't clicked they haven't gone through to your website or anything but they have seen it it will record a conversion if they convert within 24 hours so for example if somebody sees your Facebook ad and let's say you're selling watches and they see your Facebook ad they don't go through to your website but within 24 hours they Google your company name they go through to your website and convert Facebook will still record that sale Google on the other hand used to work on what was called a first touch attribution model which means it would attribute the sale depending on which platform had the first contact with the with the buyer or the person who converted because these things I will say sale a lot but it could also be leads it could also be brochure downloads or any other conversion metric that you're measuring and they used to have a look at first touch because they wanted to attribute the conversion to the first person who got that individual's attention however now today they do it on a last touch basis and last touch simply means that if somebody has come from for example organic SEO They've come through to your website, they've bounced off, they, the remarketing picks them up, they hit Facebook and they see a Facebook ad, they come back into your website, they bounce off again, they go and do a load of research and then they hit a Google ad 
and they come back in through a Google ad and they make the sale then, could be even a month later, it will assign that sale in its entirety or GA4 will assign that sale in its entirety to the Google ad, despite the fact that SEO and Facebook ads have had a lot to do with nurturing that individual towards a sale. So I'm gonna give you two live examples of real life attribution problems that you could have with GA4 and Facebook ads. If you don't wanna see those, then just go into the description and click the hyperlinks and get into the next bit. So I've got a few examples that are gonna try and really articulate how GA4 and Facebook ads will actually attribute the sale because they will do it differently. So let's say somebody comes in organically to your website. So they, they Google for what it is you do, you come up on page one of Google and they go through to your website. Facebook retargeting then hits them, they click and it's two days later and they come back to the site. Three days later, they conduct some competitor analysis when they've got their day off and they're looking at your reviews, doing all of this research. And during that competitor analysis, they see a Google ad for your product and they click and then they buy. What Who does GA4 attribute that sale to? Well, the answer, is Google Ads. It attributes the entirety of that sale to Google Ads. However, Meta will also claim the credit for that sale, but that won't be reflected in Google Ads. Now, Meta will correctly attribute that sale because it had a lot to do with it. It's been picked up on the retargeting, it's brought somebody back into your website and it's kick-started that review process. So who's really responsible for the sale? The reality is that it's a team effort. Okay, one last one, we'll just do one more. Somebody sees your Facebook ad, they click on it and they go through to your website. They don't buy then and there because actually if somebody just seeing an ad, clicking on it and buying is quite rare. Two days later, they see a Google ad that's from a remarketing campaign and they still don't buy. They click, but they still don't buy. He starts to follow your content on Meta organically and he checks out all of your reviews across multiple platforms. They go back to your website by directly entering your URL into their browser and makes a purchase eight days later after clicking on your Facebook ad. Who gets the sales attribution? Well, on GA4, it will attribute it to direct traffic only. Facebook will have no attribution at all because the sale happened eight days after they initially clicked on your ad. So it feels a little bit unfair to Facebook because without the click on that initial ad, they just weren't gonna end up transacting at all. But if it doesn't happen within that seven day window, there'll be no attribution on Facebook. So because of the different attribution models used by GA4 and Meta Ads, GA4 will always underreport sales and conversions from Meta, regardless of how you set it up. Now the sales that it does attribute are likely to have a really simple customer journey, such as your client literally sees your ad, clicks on it, goes to your website, and they buy immediately. In most other scenarios, it's likely that GA4 will attribute the sale to other channels. So how can you really know if Facebook ads are working you can check my video here that's all about Facebook performance analysis um, with Facebook ads. But to summarize here, you're going to have to look at a few different data sources, such as what Meta is telling you, what GA4 is telling you, and most importantly, what the company revenue is telling you. For example, with our client here who went from £435,000 to £615,000 revenue over their summer period with just £12,000 investment in Facebook ads. Now this was the only marketing channel they were running, so it's a little bit more simple for them to understand exactly the impact that the Facebook ads had made compared to the previous year when they did none. But you're gonna have to take a really holistic view and really understand your data. So I hope that helps guys. We're Jamie Stenton from Lilac James, a specialist digital marketing agency that do Google ads, Facebook ads, and SEO. And uh, do subscribe, and we'll see you next time.